All right, so let's look at example 11. And the first thing I want to think about is which land am I in, right? I'm going to be on a sampling distribution, but am I looking at averages or am I looking at proportions? So let's, let's be on the lookout for buzzwords to help us through this, right? So samples of size 49 are drawn from a distribution that is highly skewed to the right with a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 14. What's the probability of getting a sample mean between 71 and 73? So there's a few things I want us to look at. See the word mean here as a great giveaway, right? See sample mean here, another great giveaway. Another thing I would also take note is that you see these numbers, right? You see 70, 71, and 73. Those are not proportions, right? There's not percentages next to it. They are not decimals between zero and one. So with those kind of clues, I can see that I am in mean land. Okay. When I am in mean land, I know that I'm going to be in this column here. All right. And when I'm in that column, right, when I'm talking about the sampling distribution for means, when I'm looking at averages, means I must have had a numerical variable. I need to find the mean of my population distribution and the standard deviation of my population distribution because I'm going to keep the same center, but I'm going to divide the standard deviation by the square root of n. All right, and we're all going to try and figure out, can I put the capital in there? Is the shape normal? So, so let's, let's see if we can do this. All right, so I need to figure out something about my population and something about my sampling distribution. All right? And so we only do these, these things when we're in mean land. With proportion land, it's just a totally different game. All right, so I'll put my question marks. All right, and again, this, this type of uh, like deconstruction of the problem, I only do that in mean land. So let's see what I can get out of this. It says samples of size 49 are drawn from a distribution, right? So a population distribution that highly is highly skewed right. So I know my population distribution is skewed right, but I know the mean is 70. Oh, I didn't highlight this word. Now that I'm looking at it, that's a good one to highlight. So mean of 70 and standard deviation of 14. Okay. So let's go ahead and put those in, right? So I've got skewed right. I'm going to put all of this in your skewed right, mean of 70, standard deviation of 14. Okay. All right. So let's see what I can figure out about my sampling distribution. So let's go play by the rules, right? It says that the center for my sampling distribution is still the same as my population distribution. So I'll keep the mean, but I'm going to divide the standard deviation by the square root of n. So for this problem, what that plays out like is I will keep the mean at 70, but I'm going to shrink this. This is going to be 14 divided by the square root of 49. And when we do 14, divided by the square root of 49, I should get two because 14 divided by seven is two. Okay. Now the big question, can I put the N here? All right. My population distribution is skewed right. So I, I actually, I don't have a normal distribution. I couldn't use normal CDF here, but could I use normal CDF for the sampling distribution? Well, let's see. Again, mean land, it's easier to check for normality. It's so much nicer. It's one of the nicer distribution or sampling distributions, or it is the nicer sampling distribution. So was the population distribution stated as normal? No, it was actually specifically stated as skewed right. So in this case, I did not meet assumption number one. But the central limit theorem kicked in because the sample size was 49, and 49 is greater than or equal to 30. So I hit the central limit theorem, great. So I can now drop the n here. So now that we've established what we know about the population distribution and the sampling distribution, let's see what they were asking us to calculate. So this says what is the probability, all right, so I see capital P, stuff in parentheses, sample mean, all right, that symbol we have is x bar, so we're on the x bar distribution, all right. So we want the average of these 49 observations. 
sample mean between 71 and 73. All right, so it's only because they're asking us about the sample means that I can use normal CDF and continue this problem. If they were asking me about the population distribution and it was skewed right, I couldn't answer the question. But because it's on the sampling mean and the averages go normal once the sample size is 30 or higher, we're good to go in that case. So if I wanted to make a graph of this thing and just kind of get some gut feelings as to what this problem is asking me to find, well, let's do it. This would be X bar here. I don't have any context for the question. There wasn't any like, this is um, like we were dealing with before, children dealing with poverty level or um, average length of hockey games, nothing like that. I don't have any context, so I can just put numbers here. This is 70. The standard deviation was two, so let me go up. This will be relatively easy to count for once. All right, so this would be 72, 74, 76, 68, 66, 64. All right, but let me start with the x-axis. Ooh, and I see a problem here. Just take a look at my notation. I do have an error here. So let's look, it says, what's the probability of getting a sample mean between 71 and 73. So I need an X bar over this. All right, so now I'm gonna start with my X axis and go between 71 and 73. So as I'm looking at this, it's gonna be pretty close. Nope, 71 is actually over here. So we got 71. And then I gotta to go to 73. Okay, so something like that. Let me shade the area under this curve. All right, so that to me looks like a decent chunk, like 20%, 20, 20%, 20, 25, somewhere, there, somewhere in there. Um, I'm also noticing I didn't label my Y axis. So let me put probabilities there. All right, so to run this, because I have N, I can use normal CDF. And on our X axis, it's actually kind of nice. Oh, I didn't really label these. Let me extend this. You don't technically need to do this because it's a multiple choice question, but I want to show it just because I'm the teacher. All right, so we're going on the X axis, 71, 73, the mean was 70, and our standard deviation was two. All right, so let's see what we get. Let me clear this out. All right, normal CDF, 71, 73, centered at 70, standard deviation at two, and I'm looking at 24%. All right, so we've got about 24, and if I'm looking, was it 0.17? Let's see, I didn't grab it. Yeah, 0.2417. And before we head out of here, this is just a bonus. This is not really the, obviously this is not part of the multiple choice question, we answered it. If they had asked instead, what is the probability that X is between 71 and 73? We couldn't do it. I can't use normal CDF. And the reason we can't use normal CDF is because the population distribution was skewed right. It was specifically not normal, which is why we can't use normal CDF, all right? So we would say we can't do this problem. Put a little sad face there. But I just want to point that out. The only reason we were able to go to an answer here is because the central limit theorem kicked in and the sampling distribution was normal, right? We didn't have any information about, or any specifics about the shape of the population distribution. We knew it was skewed right, but I don't know, severely skewed. What's the probability distribution? I didn't have any of that info. So I couldn't have answered this question down here, but I know plenty about the sampling distribution, which is why I can answer the question. All right, I'll see you on the next page. Bye.